time in the presence of the Lord tonight. We're going to have a great time worshiping Him and hearing the Word of God. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you are our pursuit. You are our desire. And Lord, to be in your presence is fullness of joy. Father, I thank you for your anointing flowing through our praise and worship team. I thank you for your glory filling this place and filling your people. For your presence, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness that, it, that is toward us. Your glory is full of your goodness, Father. We give you praise tonight for everything you're going to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you want to come up front and dance, rejoice, whatever, be free and worship the King. Amen.
I am chosen, I am free I am living for eternity Free now forever You pick me up, turn me round You set my feet on solid ground And nothing's gonna hold me back And nothing's gonna hold me back And nothing's gonna hold me back yeah. My chains fell off, my heart was free I'm alive to live for you
Hallelujah, Lord. We love your presence tonight. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you that we can drink freely. You said, come to the waters and drink. Father, we receive of you right now. We receive of your presence. Thank you for your love that fills each one of us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your peace. Lord, thank you for your joy. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to do life alone, but we can be filled and filled again with you, that we can know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Lord, I thank you tonight for everything that you've ordained to happen, everything you're going to release. Lord, we come with great expectation tonight. We come with a spirit of faith, a spirit of expectation, Lord, that you're going to do great and mighty things tonight. Lord, we're expecting you to manifest your glory, manifest your presence. And Lord, when your presence comes, it comes heavy with everything that is good an abundance of everything that the Gentiles seek after, that all people without you seek after. Lord, it's you that we seek. It's you that we desire. It's your presence to be with you. Your word says that you ordained your disciples that first they should be with you. So, Lord, that's our calling is to be with you, to know you, to walk with you and experience you. And, Lord, that's our heart's cry. It's our desire every day to walk with you to know you more and to manifest your goodness to those around us thank you lord for filling your church for blessing your church tonight as we come together to seek your face lord we come because we want to be touched by you we want to hear from you what you have to say to us daddy and we love you tonight father we love you tonight father in jesus name hallelujah Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated tonight. Thank you, Lord. Isn't God wonderful? How many of you were here this morning? God bless you. How many of you didn't get to be here this morning and this is your first time to hear Bishop Duke, at least this time? Anybody this is your first time? God bless you as well. You're going to be very highly blessed tonight as he comes to minister to us. He brought a powerful, powerful word to this morning about the presence of the Lord and what we found out is that last Sunday the Lord had me uh, preach on his presence this Sunday Bishop Duku preached on his presence so we figured out didn't take a rocket science to figure out that means double portion of his presence amen God's trying to emphasize I Isaiah 61 7 says for your shame you shall have double how many of you could receive double You may not be going to Ireland right now, but you could be Dublin. Amen? (laughs) Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So God's got some great things for us tonight as well. We found out this morning that in his presence is provision, protection, and healing. Glory to God. Those three things are in his presence that everyone seeks after. But if we just get in his presence, we will get provision. We will get protection. And we will get divine healing, won't we, church? Glory to God. Well, I know that uh, we don't want to put any restraints on Bishop Duku. We want to let him minister as the Lord leads him and and, uh, tonight. So we're going to give you a chance. I'm going to give you a chance to sow into his ministry right now. And uh, that way, if uh, a Holy Ghost nuclear explosion goes off in here and we're all out, it's okay. We've already received the offering. And I want to encourage you, as I did this morning, the Bible says, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. I think Bishop Duku has been on at least five continents, would you say, Bishop Duku? At least five continents, maybe more, of the earth. So when we sow into him, we are sowing into a man of God that's going all over the globe, taking the gospel of of Jesus all over the world. And we get to be a part of it as we sow seed in his ministry. So tonight, if you want to sow, you need an offering envelope. If you lift your hand up, our ushers will get you an offering envelope. If you're making a check, make it to Oasis Church. Praise God. And uh, glory to God. We want to see the man of God blessed. We are so thankful that God sent Bishop Duku here all the way from South Africa to bless us. Amen.
Come on now. Hallelujah. Do you have a, your offering ready? All right. Let's pray over these offerings. Lord, we thank you tonight again that we get to sow into your kingdom. Lord, we thank you that you provide seed for the sower, bread for m- food, and you multiply our seed sown. So, Lord, I just thank you that you are multiplying your people's seed tonight and blessing them and blessing the man of God. Lord, we thank you for that opportunity that in your kingdom, whatever we sow gets multiplied back to us. And Lord, I'm just reminded of the ram caught in the thicket that as soon as Abraham offered his Isaac, his his prize uh, promise that you manifested to him, his only son that he loved, As soon as he offered his Isaac, Lord, there was already provision right there in the thicket. The ram was there in the thicket. Lord, you've already seen that we were going to sow before we did it. You've already made provision, and the provision is already manifesting now. So we receive it. We magnify your name. We thank you, Lord, that it's manifesting to us right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ushers, let's go ahead and receive the offerings. Amen. to God. Why don't you stand on your feet with me? Let's give Bishop Duku a warm welcome as he comes to minister the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, lift your hands and worship him tonight. We have an open invitation tonight to eat with the king. We are the presence of the king and there is complete restoration. In the morning I spoke about three important things that all of us need. And we can find it it in scripture. Where the woman had the issue of blood for 12 years. And he went through powerful, in the hands of powerful medical doctors, physicians, they could not help. But the moment... uh, She pressed her way through to the presence of Jesus. She became whole. And the Bible tells us, again, of Peter, a professional fisherman, who toiled the whole night and caught nothing. But when he obeyed Jesus, five important things happened in Luke chapter 5. We saw again with the three Hebrew boys who were thrown into the fire to die. But as Pastor James was saying, they came out of the fire without any smoke. They were having a party inside the fire. And I tell you, as we have invitation tonight, tonight, Sunday night, and people are getting ready to go to work tomorrow, but may the Lord bless you for coming to listen to what the Lord has sent me to bring to you tonight, you will never go back the same. I'm not going to hold you, but I tell you, it's going to be a powerful word, revelation tonight, that we are going back and ready to know that no matter where the devil has placed us, we have got an open invitation to eat at the king's table. Continually. Not only one day, continually. That is our portion in Jesus' name. Father, we bless you for what a powerful praise and worship team. Great praise and worship team. 
the worship team here, the music team, right in Oasis. Father, we have enjoyed them. Thank you for the great anointing on uh, Jennifer's life and the team. It is so wonderful, Father. The morning was great, and this evening, the same thing, the same anointing, Father. We see the power in praise and worship. Where Jehoshaphat was told to tell the people not to fight, but to position themselves and begin to sin. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And when they lifted the name of the Lord in singing, the Lord laid an ambush against the series now. Father, as great praise and worship goes on here, Father, we believe that there's an ambush against the enemy of our life, Father. We worship you tonight, Father. Oh, come on, says, let's give the Lord a clap of praise tonight. Says, let's worship him tonight. Let's worship him tonight, says, hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father. We honor you. Speak to us, Father. Minister to us, Father. It's time for restoration, Lord. In the presence of the king, there is restoration, Lord. Whatever the enemy has stolen from us is coming back tonight. In Jesus' name. Since I say whatever the enemy is stolen from us is coming back tonight, in Jesus' name. In the, in the presence of the king, there is complete restoration. Hallelujah. We are being restored tonight, Father. Hey, what is due? As is coming in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father. In Jesus' name. And let us say, shout amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, yeah, brother, you are anointed. I enjoyed you tonight. Wonderful. Go ahead and have a seat. And may the Lord bless you so much for coming. I was so blessed, Jennifer. What a great time. You led us so well. Let's give the Lord a clap offering for Pastor Jim and Pastor Canada, great leaders. We are blessed. You need to begin to appreciate your pastors. If you do that, it's so easy to receive from them. And you see, the Bible says when we believe the prophets, what happened to us? We shall prosper. If you want to prosper, you need to believe your leaders. So that you will prosper. We thank God for you, Pastor James and Canada. You are wonderful people. We praise God for your lives. I'm ministering tonight on the topic. If you want to write down the topic I'm ministering on, that at the presence of the king, there is complete restoration. Tonight, you're not going to live the same. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've got an open invitation to eat at the king's table tonight. And Father, hallelujah, we thank you for this revelation that is coming out tonight. That your saints will know, no matter where the enemy have placed us, no matter where life circumstances have put us, Lord, still, we have a great inheritance in you. And we're coming back for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel and chapter number 4, and verse 4. I think Brother Philip and um, Becky will help me at the back there. We will use that tonight a lot. I want you to understand that. So, if, if you will, I, I like that, you're going to follow that, and it's going to be such a revelation for you. Some of us here, the enemy, Pastor James and Pastor Canada, they try to locate us from where we are not supposed to be. And the Lord is bringing us back tonight. Hallelujah. Jonathan's son, Jonathan Saul's son, had a son who was lame in his feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. And his nurse took him and fled. And it happened, as he made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame. His name was Mephibosheth. I want you to understand this. 
Some of us here, we are not born the way we are today. Something happened. As we can see from here, Mephibosheth was not born lame, but something happened. Saul and his son Jonathan died the same day. And when the news came, not only that, his three sons died the same day with him, according to 2 Kings chapter number 2. You read about the story about when the Philistines killed Saul and his sons. And the news came, so the nurse of this young man who was five years old was afraid that they want to wipe out the king's seed. So she made haste to run away with the young man. With a boy. And as she was trying to run, she dropped the boy. And the boy became lame. Somebody here accidentally, something has happened to your life. So you have been deprived of your rights. Until now, we are going to see what God can do. You have a covenant with the living God. And once you have a covenant, God will never forget his covenant. Hallelujah. We serve a God who is a covenant-keeping God. So no matter what the enemy has done to, tonight, he is going to renew the covenant that he has with you. Hallelujah. Yes. I say hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. Tonight is our night of what? Restoration. Complete restoration is coming to us tonight. God is going to remember his covenant with somebody tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What happened to the young man? Something happened. The nurse made a mistake and he dropped the boy. Said the boy became lame. And it's so sad. When it happened, you're going to see as we continue the story and see what God is going to do tonight. Somebody, you are not going to stay where the enemy has placed you. Tonight is your night to come up. I say tonight is your night as you are coming to the presence of the king. And when you come to the presence of the king, there is complete what? Restoration. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That tonight is my night of complete restoration. I receive it in Jesus' name. Somebody, your complete restoration, your finances is coming back in Jesus' name. Somebody, your health is coming back in Jesus' name. Somebody, your marriage is put together in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Whatever the devil stole from you is coming back tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Are you enjoying the story? It's going to be so interesting. You're doing good, Brother Philip. Wonderful. Great work. Becky, let's come to chapter 9 of the same book. So you go five more chapters and you come to chapter 9. We'll start from verse 1. Chapter 9 and verse 1 of Second Samuel. And you are going to get a clear picture of what we're talking about. Don't let where you have been put demoralize you. You're coming up. Now David said, Is there anyone who is left in the house of who? Saul. That I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake. I don't know if you understand this. He's talking of covenant. Somebody lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord, for the covenant I have with you. You are a covenant-keeping God. You will never forget the covenant that you have with me. Hallelujah. Somebody, God has a covenant with you. Hallelujah. I say, God has what? A covenant with us. And you will never forget that covenant. A covenant is binding. You see, in the olden days, when a covenant is made, they cut an animal into pieces and the two people walk in that to show that if any one of them should break the covenant, that is what it will be done. Covenant is something you cannot break. That is why Jonathan, in spite of the fact that his father hated David so much, he never betrayed a friend. To the point that Saul had to insult his own son, Jonathan, because of the love, the bond that existed between them. If you remember, Saul called his own son, Jonathan, a son of a bastard because of David. And he did that because Jonathan would never break the covenant he had with David. 
The Bible says in 1 Samuel that Jonathan loved Saul, David, like his own soul. That is the essence of covenant. You're going to see something. Now, Jonathan is dead. David became king. And this is the first question. Is there anyone left in the house of Saul? I don't know if you know the relationship between Saul and Jonathan and, and, and David. David's greatest enemy, though David didn't have an enemy, but Saul's greatest enemy, let me put it that way, the other way around. Saul's greatest enemy is who? David. He did everything to, 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 to do away with the boy. But God's hand was upon the young man. And you know something? When, um, when David became king, he forgot about what Saul had done because he had a covenant with Jonathan. God has a covenant with you. And you will never let the devil destroy you. So see something here. Very important question. Is there anyone who is left in the house of who? Saul. That I may show what kindness. Who is speaking? The king of Israel. The king of kings is asking tonight. Is there somebody here that I shall, can show kindness for the sake of who? Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I say hallelujah. Yes. I say hallelujah. Glory. Anybody here left tonight? Yes. God wants to show his kindness for the sake of Jesus. When he sees you, he sees Jesus. Because you have accepted Jesus as your personal savior. Let's go on and see something. The story is going to get so interesting. Verse 2. Verse number 2. And there was what? A servant of the house of Saul, whose name was Ziba. So when he had called to him, to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, At your service. The next verse. Then the king said, is there not still someone in the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, there is still what? A son of who? Who is what? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it doesn't matter where the devil has placed you. This is your night. You are going to sit at the king's table. And there's complete restoration in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Stop seeing yourself insignificant. You don't have a pity party for yourself. You need to be confident of yourself. Because of Jesus. You have a covenant with who? With Jesus. And you will never forget that. So you see what is happening here. Ziba told the king that there is someone left in the house of who? Jonathan. But he is what? Lame. It doesn't matter. Just as you are, come to the table. God is a covenant keeping God. And you will forget about whatever the devil have done against your life. He's going to clean you up and put you where you are supposed to be. How many of us know that they, this young man was supposed... Who, who is this man we are talking about? Mephibosheth. Is, is that right? Who is Mephibosheth? He is the grandson of who? And so where was he supposed to stay? How many of you watched the wedding in England? Was it the queen's son? The one we had two years ago? It was the, king, the queen's who? Grand what? So grandchildren enjoy even more than the children. Because the mothers, you know what? When, when Gabriel and, uh, and uh, what do we call him? Um, Olivia go to Judy. Judy enjoys them because now he, 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 the children are grown. He enjoys them more than he enjoyed uh, uh, Pastor Canada. How many of you agree to what I'm talking about? So, how many of you know where the boy was supposed to be living right now? Mephibosheth was supposed to be living where? In the palace of who? Jonathan, Saul and Jonathan. But something happened. So, you are going to see tonight, some of you, you are not where you are supposed to be 
because the enemy try to dislocate you, but you are coming back in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I say you are coming back in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord, for my complete restoration tonight. Hallelujah. Everything the devil stole from me is coming back tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Those who are not here tonight are going to miss something. Hallelujah. It's going to be ministry time. But it's so simple, the story you are going to, there's a revelation coming out from here. So now, this young man who is not born lame and who is not staying at where he is staying, he's not supposed to be staying now. The man should be in the palace sitting with the king. But you will see what the enemy have done. Some of us here, we are supposed to be sitting with the king and enjoy every day. But the enemy have done something, but I tell you, we are coming back in Jesus' name. I say we are coming back in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us back. Verse number four. So the king said to him, where is he? And Ziba said, indeed, he is in the house of Micah, the son of Amiel. In Lodiba. You know the meaning of the word Lodiba? It is a town. And you know the meaning of that? It's a place for useless, worthless people. You go to the Hebrew text and find the meaning of the name of that town. Lodiba means what? A place for what? Useless, worthless people. Where is this boy supposed to be living? He's supposed to be living where? But where has the enemy put him? In Lodiba. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it doesn't matter where the enemy has placed me. I'm coming back tonight. I am supposed to be sitting with a king. I am going to enjoy at the king's table. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. We're coming back to the king's table. We have an open invitation to the king's table. There is no limitation, hallelujah. The boy should be sitting where? In the palace with servants serving him. With every meal, dressed in royalty. But the man is now living where? In Lodiba. Some of us, we are not supposed to be where we are. God is remembering the covenant that Jesus died to take away your poverty. He died to take away your sickness. He died to take away your infirmity. And that is why tonight is coming back to you. If you are a believer in Jesus, he is going to see the covenant that he made. Hallelujah. The next verse. The story is going to get interesting. Then the king sent and brought him out of the house of Michael, the son of Emiel, from where? Lodiba. Let's go on. It's going to be interesting. The king sent for him. So the king is sending for somebody tonight. Tonight, you have got a special invitation with the king. And as I lay hands on you, it is coming back. Can I tell you something? Pastor Ricky has been there. He's been to Ghana. We've been to Ghana together. And um, we, we have a lot of things to do together with your pastor here. He was talking about me going to South America, Brazil, Mexico, going uh, to the all over the Caribbean, all over Asia, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Hong Kong, everywhere going all over Europe, Germany, France, I do four countries in Europe within two weeks. You won't believe that. All over Africa. There are times within a, 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 within a year I touch more than 12 nations ministry. And I've got a church at home, a television program, everything. But you know something? I completed university all to the glory of the Lord and I've never seen an aeroplane before. I grew up in the bush. Though I was born to a paramount king, in the area, Pastor Tom had been to my hometown. And um, I went with another guy, a white guy from, uh, from Kansas City, and he says, if this is where you are born, you are not supposed to be where you are today. Let me tell you something. God is going to transform somebody tonight for you to be where God wants you to be. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, I'm born for the palace. I am not supposed to be where I am now. I belong to the king. And I am supposed to be sitting in the palace. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. 
Tonight is your night of what? Restoration. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter your past. When I was coming back, I was speaking to a friend of mine. And on, on Thursday morning, Pastor Ricky would drive me highway, a medical friend, doctor. We are in high school together in Ghana. We'll just drive, working in Dallas. He's been there for 25 years. We'll drive halfway and pick me. Pastor Ricky, I've done it about three, four times. And I will be there just only for Thursday night. And just spend time with him and the family on Friday morning. My friend called from Arkansas, just bought a ticket. I will go there, spend evening with him, a businessman, rent the car. I will drive two hours from there to Alma, preach, and come back to him. Jess is going to drive me in the morning to Jackson, Mississippi, where at times I used to use, uh, meet Jennifer there when she was schooling there, doing his college there, her college. And let me tell you something. Well, at times, past the Canada, when, when, when I'm sitting on the flight, like I was coming, Within two days, changing five flights, I begin to ask myself, that is why I pray I stay humble all the time. I don't deserve what I'm doing. It is only the favor of the Lord. And let me tell you something, Oasis, the favor of the Lord is on this church. Hallelujah. The favor of the Lord is right because of the humility and the spirit of unity that is here. The favor of the Lord is on this church now. Within a year, the transformation that has taken place here, the way you are fusing together, God is going to do amazing things in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Come on, lift your hands and thank God tonight. Thank God tonight. Hallelujah. I said there's complete what? Restoration coming in Jesus' name. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You see, I want us to get this mentality right. Stop having a pity party for yourself. I'm thinking you are nothing. You are something, somebody because of Christ. It doesn't matter your past, where you're coming from. So the king sent for the boy. And this young man came, and let's go on with the story. And now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face, prostrated himself. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, here is your servant. The next verse. I want you to see something. So David said to him, do not what? Fear. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, do not be afraid. It doesn't matter where the devil has placed you, you are coming out. You, 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 see, you see the problem. The problem is some of us at times we become fearful. When we see our condition and what is going on, we think we cannot make it. It's not about you, it's about him. And when he's on your side, he's going to transform you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. If you can use a dump and a stupid person like me, I don't know what about you. I walk in the streets when I get up. When we, I, I, on, th on, on, on Wednesday, I went out with my wife and children, two girls are trying to, Jennifer knows them, he's been around, I drove to pick it up, and um, I try to do groceries for them, spend more than, when, when I'm gone for a month, I have to make sure I keep the house, everything, and um, I spend not less than about $500 doing the groceries, just for the one month, and it's a lot of money in Africa. And we go out and everywhere I attend, people saluting, greeting me in the streets. I'm not even from there, a missionary for 22 years. The popularity, what is going on, I say, Lord, I don't deserve this. The more the Lord blesses me, the more I become humble. There are people, when the Lord blesses them, the way they become proud. It's not about you. When the Lord opens doors, that is where you need to be more humble because it's not your grace. It is just a favor from God. He could use anyone. You should count yourself blessed that the king of kings is using you. It doesn't give us any certificate to think we are so important. I'm not important. I'm nothing without him. And so you know what? When the man came, he was afraid. You imagine the king sent for this boy living in a worthless place in the ghettos. And now he comes. And when he came, how did he come before the king? He did not come standing. The Bible says he came on his knees and he, what? What did he do? He fell prostrate before the king. And now the king saw something. So David said to him, do not what? For I will do what? Surely do what? Show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake. Somebody said that my God 
is going to show me kindness. For Jesus' sake. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I am a believer in his son. And as a result, once I believe in him, he's going to show me kindness. It's not about me. Mephibosheth did not have any right, but because of who? Because of Jonathan. You did not have any right, but because of Jesus. God is going to show you kindness. Hallelujah. I said, somebody, God is going to show you kindness. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've got news for you. I refuse to die before my time. Yeah, hallelujah. There are great things ahead of me in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He said, do not what? Fear for our word. Surely. It will not fail. That is the meaning of that word. Show you kindness for whose sake? Jonathan, your father's sake. I will what? I will do what? How much? Oh. Somebody say complete restoration is coming to me in Jesus' name. Oh. Hallelujah. Jesus. My God is going to restore. My money is coming back. My peace is coming back. My health is coming back. Everything that the devil has stolen from me is coming back in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It is your right in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. But there's a problem we have to deal with tonight. There is a problem we have to deal with tonight. You see something? Here is what the king is saying. I'm going to restore how much? All the land of Saul, your grandfather. And you will do what? Where is this boy coming from right now? Lodiba. And what is the meaning of Lodiba? So from Lodiba to where? That's a complete shift in no time. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, with God, it takes just a second to change your destiny. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Tonight is my night in Jesus' name. Can I tell you something? The same thing happened with Joseph. You know what? 20 minutes ago, Joseph was a prisoner. 20 minutes later, he's what? The nest in command. That's what is happening right here. The boy is sitting in Lodeba just a few minutes ago as doesn't even have food to eat in a ghetto. And then within a second, the king said, do not fear, number one, I am going to restore everything to you. And number two, you are going to sit here at my table and you will eat bread how many times? Is somebody learning something tonight? Any child of Jesus here tonight? Any child of Jesus here tonight? God is remembering the covenant he has with Jesus. And so tonight is your night. Somebody hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Tonight is your night. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say neighbor. You have not seen anything yet. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Oh well since you have not seen anything yet. The best is yet to come. Spiritually, I see this place fill up. What you see here, even look at Sunday evening. Look at the number of people here. I tell you, begin, get ready, get ready, get ready. You get ready here. There's a harvest coming here in Jesus' name. Some of you don't know what is happening. Already 84 nations are watching you from here all the time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Number one, I'm going to restore how much of the land? Oh. And number two, you are going to do what? Sit where? Stay here in my house, in the palace, and eat bread how many times? Really. But there's a problem. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. all these promises are here for us. Here for but we have, we have a problem. We need to change our mindset. We need to receive what God is telling us. You see, the king is telling this boy something, but the mind is not, the mind is not yet shifted yet. Somebody, God is going to shift your mindset tonight in Jesus' name. So you can receive. 
Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Bless your mighty and say, Father, I need a complete mind shift tonight. Say about your mentality. Listen to what the boy is going to say in verse 8. You listen to that. Look at, look at that. Then David, Mephibosheth did what? He bowed himself again before the king. What is your servant? That you should look upon such a dead dog. Are you learning something? That is the way at times we say to ourselves. Unbelief. The boy couldn't believe that. The king is telling you, don't worry, boy, you are no longer going back to Lodiba. You stay here with me. You will sit and eat bread on my table continually. And number two, I'm going to restore to you all the land that belongs to your grandfather as a king. And listen to the answer from the boy. The boy, instead of jumping and getting excited, you know what the boy is saying. He says, I don't think this is possible. Why do you do such a thing for? I am a dead dog. That is the way at times some of us speak. I'm very humble but very confident. I know who I am. There's, there, there's, there's a complete difference between pride and confidence. The Bible says God resists the proud. But he makes room for what? The humble. And the Bible says that without confidence you cannot approach the throne of God. You need confidence to do that. Says, lift your hands and say thank you Lord. For who you have made me. Say thank you father. I am special. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am rich. I'm not poor. I am healed. I'm not sick. You need, begin, you, you need to begin to articulate some of these things upon your life. That is what I told my church. I was sharing with them when we went for lunch today. A testimony. Something happened. I, I, I see let, let, let me say, you know, you've been to Barov. And you know what? Something happened last year. October, I sent 11 of my ladies to the United States. The greatest nation on the planet. 11 people, black women, who have never bought an airplane before. And I told them, when I started the time, I started prophesying. I told them, I don't want black mindset here because you're going to waste my time. Sorry here, I'm not here to offend any black person, but I'm speaking the fact. Because of where we were put. And some of us think we are nothing. There is nothing good. And that is what I told them. You don't want you to come and waste my time with your black thinking. I'm sorry. I don't have time for that. I don't see myself black. I said this so many times. I don't like black people. I went to a church. 3,000 members in Peoria, Illinois. And. The church is 3,000 members, all whites, and I stand up and say, I'm sorry, I don't like white people. <laughs> and every eye goes so, went so big. You, you are the only black person here, and you're saying you don't like white people? <laughs> and I have to help some people there quickly. So I said, I don't like black people either. Yeah. <laughs> so they settled. I like kingdom people. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I work with Pastor James, I don't see color. I'm not, I, don't tell, I don't have time for color. Yeah. It's not about color. When, when you are truly born again and washed by the blood, you don't see people by the way they look. You see them in the spirit, right? You don't see people. If you are here and you still see people by color, you are sick. You need a mind overhaul. That's a problem with you. You need to change from there. I don't have time for that. I don't, that is why I told people, I was preaching in the church, the director of TBN, some of you who watch, Andre Rabbit. He's got four aeroplanes. A friend of mine, Pastor Tom, Pastor Ricky and the wife know. When they came the first time, I took them to his building in East London to preach. He owes four aeroplanes. Friend to all these top guys here, we will bring TDJs, we all sit and eat together. All of us, we, we sit at times, um, we, we will sit there with Joyce Mayer. I'm telling you, got pictures with all those guys. But you know something, he said, Edward, can we come? I said, look here. You are white and black. You think you are going to respect me. Because you're not going to come with white. I'm not interested in that. When I sit with you, we, we sit as brothers. Yes. I don't see any white here. I don't see any black here. Amen. I see kingdom people here. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And you know what I say? Brother Beaver, you know what I say? I tell them I won't behave black so that you treat me a black person. 
I tell them that is the problem. If you be behave black, people will be treat you black. If you behave white, people will treat you white. I don't behave like that. If I don't keep time, I tell you I'll be there 2 o'clock, I came 5 o'clock, and then you treat me black, I will not say you are racist. You are not racism. I need to change my way of life. My thinking. So I won't behave that way. That is why I tell people, if you see me as a man from Africa, you have a problem. I live in Africa, but I don't think like one. I think kingdom. I think what the word says. I live above that. Pastor Kala will say that I am his favorite guest. When I come to the house, Pastor Ricky say, Bishop, you leave the room neater than you found it. That is where we need to learn to understand. We are kingdom people and kingdom people are different. I am making a point here. Some of us, unless we change our mindset, our thinking, God, the king is giving all these promises to the boy, but the boy is still in the old mindset. I am nothing. I'm living in Lodaba. You can't tell me that. I don't need that. Somebody here tonight, God is breaking that mentality. You are somebody, you are above and not beneath. In Jesus' name. Yes. There is a mentality breaking tonight. Lift your hands and receive that. And I say, thank you, Father, for who you have made me. I'm special. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. You know what? You know something, Pastor James? Some of us, we are, we are the cremora. I don't, know the, I don't know what you call it. Is it the powder milk? What do you call it here? The cream. The, what, what do you put on top? The creamer. You call it creamer? I want to be a creamer Christian. You know what it means? You will put it on top of the hot tea or coffee, and uh, when you try to push it down, it comes up. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am going to be a creamer Christian. The devil will never push me down. When you push me down, I'll be coming up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I refuse to stay down. My position is up there. We have to sit. A table is set before you. That is what I've done to the boy. The boy has to change the way he's thinking. In the presence of the king, there's complete restoration. He has the right to decree. And when Pastor Canada has been saying this again, when God opens a door for you, no one can close it. No one can change it. Somebody here tonight, God is opening a door for you. I will not keep long. I'm going to be laying hands on you tonight and believe a prophet from Africa has come this evening to lay hands to prophesy on your life that God has got set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You are going somewhere. Hallelujah. I say you're going somewhere. Hallelujah. I've not even started yet. My big girl is living, completing the university this year. Very good course. I didn't pay a cent. Auditing, the top course. It pays better than medicine, law, anything in the country. Just completing. He said, Daddy, where do I choose? I say, you are the one going to work. 20 years old, choose wherever you want to be. He says, I want to work in Cape Town. Cape Town is one of the 10 leading cities in the world. I say, you go, work there. I'm waiting for the, 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 the younger one. 10th grade. When it's done, that is where I'm going to begin. I've not even started yet. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Pastor Ricky's mom, you are not done yet. You are not finished yet. It is something years ago. Pastor Carlos, daddy, you are not finished yet. Eight and nine years, you are not finished yet. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. We need you. You are not going anywhere. You are going to be there to encourage us, to lift us. You know what? The Bible says that the old people will dream. Dream is for people who are asleep. You are old now. And you will pass it on and we will make it vision. Yeah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. You will be dreaming and sharing that with us. You will be supporting us and say, Carla, go forward. You say, Ricky, go forward. You will say, James, go forward. Canada, go forward. We need that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Every one of us here is so important. It's time for what? Complete what? Restoration tonight in Jesus' name. Change the way you think. If you don't know me, you might think I'm proud. I'm very humble. But I know who I am. That is one thing. And so nobody badge me. You don't just touch me around. I know who I am. 
I've got news for you so you don't make a mistake. <laughs> don't, don't, don't try to describe me. You met a man from Africa. I'm not like a child of God. Yes. Bought by the blood. Amen. Sanctified. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Is there anybody like her, that here tonight? Yes. Anybody who says I'm special, bought by the blood, yes. sanctified, and I'm going places. Hallelujah. There's no limitation on you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody has said there's no limitation on you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Listen to what the boy says. You know, when a Jewish person calls you dog, you know it's a big insult. It's a big insult. And it's not somebody calling Mephibosheth dog. He's calling himself dog. I don't know. That, that is a sermon on itself. Some of us, we speak death on our lives. When God's word is giving us all the promises, Jimmy Swagger used to sing a powerful song. Every promise in the book is mine. Every sentence, every verse, every lie. I am living on his promise divine. Every promise in the book is mine. But you know what we do? That is why I don't want anyone who hang around me and push me down and speak negative. I don't have time for negative thinkers. And people who speak negative. I don't care who you are, what you have done. God's word doesn't push you down. It doesn't matter what you have done. He said, let's work it through. Sin is sin. But he forgives you unconditionally. But whatever sin you commit, you pay for it. That one, God will forgive you, but don't forget. David slept with somebody's wife. He took Bathsheba. And you know what the Bible tells him? When Nathan came, he says that I've forgiven you. But what you did, you are going to pay for that. Two things is going to happen. The son who Bathsheba gives to you through that relationship is going to die. And number two, your own son will sleep with your wives in public. You did that in private and it will happen in public. You go to the second Samuel, it's right there. So I'm very careful. Whatever sin I think I've hid, uh, hidden and done it and God will forgive me, nobody saw it, I will pay for that. Be careful when you are sinning. We serve a forgiving God. But whatever you do will come after you. I'm telling you, there are classic examples from the way. So be careful what you do. Be careful for your actions. But don't live in that. No matter what you have done, tonight is your night of complete restoration. No matter where the devil has placed you, tonight is your night of complete restoration. Hallelujah. I pray that we get this mindset right, Pastor James. David, my people have said, I am a dead dog. I'm, I'm not worthy, not, not even a live dog. I'm a dead dog. You understand the way the boy is treating himself? Anybody like that here tonight? Thank you, Lord. Anybody like that here tonight? Any great woman of God here? Any great man of God here tonight? That is the way you need to begin. That is where you see, if I have time, I will explain it to you. But Sister Pat, you know something? Do not ever work with people who don't believe in you. I don't work with people who don't believe in me. Because they crush your spirit. Jesus asked a question, who do people say I am? And he was up to something. And when Peter answered, you see, it takes spirit of revelation to see people to see your help. Don't work with people who see you in the flesh. In the flesh, you may be not somebody, but in the spirit, you are a giant. Work with people who have got spiritual eyes, who see beyond the natural. We got people sitting here, kingdom, life changes, world changes sitting here tonight. But people don't see that. And so you need to change that. And that's why Jesus asked, and who do you say I am? And Peter answered, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And you know what Jesus, he said, flesh and blood did not receive it to you. Flesh and blood cannot know your wealth. Somebody, you are more than the tag that people have put on you. You are more than that. And tonight I pray God will bring restoration on your mind. And let you know. Let, let's try and finish up. Verse number nine. Listen to what happened now. Then the king called to Ziba, saw seven, and said to him, I've given your master's son all that belongs to Saul. The king didn't listen to what the boy was saying. He saw the boy. You, somebody, God is not listening to what you are thinking, what you are saying. 
Are you following something tonight? There are times you are human. You feel weak. You don't want to go on anymore. Do you know a time we make statements we don't mean? Can I prove that to you from the Bible? How many of you have heard of Elijah? What was Elijah running away from? He was running away from Jezebel. And why was he running away? Because Jezebel did what? Threatened to do what? And when he sat by the oak tree, what prayer did he pray? Lord, I pray that you do what? Kill me. <laughs> How many of you know that our situations will force us to make situation statements we don't mean? Don't let your situation force you to make negative statements about yourself. No matter what is going on, speak positive. Yes. When you open your mouth, speak the promises of God over your life again and see it come to happen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You, I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift your hands and say tonight. It's my night for complete restoration. Because I am sitting at the presence of the king. And whatever he says about me is coming to pass. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. David told the young man, I'm not interested about what you're saying. Forget about that. And he said, come here, Ziba. Don't listen to that boy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I said that now. I, 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 I want you to know. He doesn't receive it, but I want you to be a witness. Don't forget about him. I'm giving this, your master's servant, I'm giving everything to him. Let's go on and see what he says in verse 10. Verse 10. You therefore and your sons and your servants shall work the land for what? <laughs> you see something now? God is what? The king is employing somebody to work for who? This lame man from Lodeba. Lift your hands and say, people are going to work for my progress. <laughs> hallelujah. I say hallelujah. God is going to employ people to work for you. You will not have to pay them. Hallelujah. You will not have to pay them. This friend of mine I'm going to in Little Rock, a businessman. I needed $5,000 to do something about three months ago. I called him and say, Barry, he's got eight children, eight biological children, great man. Last year when I was here, finished everything, went to Jamaica, came back, I was going home. He called me, I was in St. Louis in my hotel room in the morning, sleeping in the car and said, Bishop, I lost my son, my daughter. Five months old. They went for holiday in Arizona, went all over. He says, the girl went to sleep, never woke up. And so they called me eight. That was the ninth child. They don't believe in family planning. He says, children are blessing from God. So he will not stop that. And um, so they called me and say, I want you to be with me. I can't stand. 200 white people, I was the only black person there. He bought a ticket. I flew, just mess up. I called South African Airways and say, cancel my flight. I'm going to stay for another week. He says, I will pay for everything. He flew me down to Arizona. We had a memorial service. He chartered a plane. He hired a plane and came with a family down to Little Rock and then put me in the hotel, the Capitol Hotel in Little Rock. $500 a night. I told him, when I went to the suit, it's just like I've never seen a room like that. I said, why don't you put me in a hotel for $80 and give me that money to take to Africa? He said, no, I won't do that. You deserve that. I want you to stay here. Four months ago, I called him and said, hey, Barry, I need $500. I said, Bishop, that is too small. I'll give you $15,000. Within, within, within three days, he put $15,000 in my account. God will employ people to work for you. Hallelujah. The, the, the Mephibosheth did he ask, I'm speaking things, believe the word of God. It works. You believe the word, it works. Hallelujah. I'm talking about what God can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to waste your time. I thought I'll continue another time when I come. But you know something? He said, therefore, you and your sons will work the land for who? You work the land for who? And you shall bring what? The harvest and your master's son may what? Have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your servant shall eat bread. Where? You will eat bread where? He is going to cover your shame. When you come and this boy is sitting by the king's table, you may not see, you see only the upper part. His lame will be hidden under the table. You won't see. God is going to cover your shame and set you on your higher table. People won't see. 
what the enemy have done to you, people will see. They will see the glorious part, what God is going to do to you. Like, hallelujah. I say hallelujah. There is complete revelation here. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. The blessing of this man is even affecting. Mephibosheth is, is, is giving blessing to Ziba and his entire family. God will bless you so you can be a blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say God will bless you so you can be what? A blessing. Yes. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and thank God tonight. Lift your hands and thank him tonight. Complete restoration. I don't want to go on. Let, let's come to the practicals. I want to pray for people tonight. I want to pray for people that God will boost your confidence level tonight. And remind you that you are a covenant person. You have a covenant with him because of Jesus. And he will never forget that covenant. You are the head and not what? The tail. You are above and never were beneath. In Jesus name. It doesn't matter where the devil has placed you. Can you imagine a boy who left university at the age of 28 years and have never seen an airplane before? Now I use 20 flies within a month. 84 flies within a year. You won't believe that. It's only God who can do that. I'm not boasting, I'm setting an example for you to know that God can use anybody if you avail yourself and believe what the word says. Change the way you think about yourself. Come on, lift your hands and thank him about your life. Will you get this off for me? Get this off for me, please. Get this off for me. And come on, lift your hands and worship the Lord tonight. Let's stand to our feet and worship him tonight. Thank him for the word tonight. You got an open invitation to dine at the king's table. Tonight, you're going to have supper with the king. And the promises that the king has for your life is coming to pass in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands tonight and worship him. Wherever you are, lift your hands and worship him tonight. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. I need the oil, please. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Canada. Come on, lift your hands and worship him. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and thank him tonight. It doesn't matter where. It doesn't matter your condition right now. Somebody, it doesn't matter your condition right now. God is changing everything. He's turning everything around right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Somebody, you are coming out of Lodiba. Somebody, you are coming out of Lodiba to sit in Jerusalem and sit at the king's table tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and say, I received that, Father. Hey. Hallelujah. And now let the poor say, I am rich. And let the weak say, I am strong. And let, and, and let, the, weak, and, and let the sick say, I am what? Because of what? Because of what Jesus has done. Not about us. I say it's not about us. Pastor, the Lord brought us together young. I'm 12 years older than you. But you know something? We are not going anywhere. We are going to turn this world around. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is looking for men and women, men of integrity who will stand for the truth and hate sin. And live pure lives. Love our wives and children and live clean lives. And turn the world around for the kingdom. It's what he's looking for. It's right here in Oasis. Hallelujah. I'm here to prophesy to you. Don't look mean on this church. God is, is going to be a lighthouse. As it's happening right here. What is happening here is so amazing. I see things happening in the street realm. And I'm prophesying just like I told my church. People can't believe. I tell you. When they came back, it is a history in the town. Josh and Collie, you left there in a, a, around August. And you know what? As I told you, 11 ladies came and it's a talk of the town. It's never happened in the history of the town before. 
God is turning it around. And God is going to use Oasis to bring a change in. There's, there's an, an atmosphere right here. Receive it tonight, saints. Receive that tonight, saints. Hallelujah. Shake out of the You are here tonight. And you say, Bishop Duku, I want you to pray for me. I, I, I'm ready to leave where the devil has placed me. I'm living tonight. I am not where I'm supposed to be. I want you to step to the front. I want to lay hands on you right now. God bless your sister. May the Lord bless your sister. God bless your brother. Step to the front. I want to pray for you right now. God bless you, Judy. Hallelujah. Lord the beaver, God bless you. You are living. That you are in the right ministry at the right place. You are blessed to be under the ministry of James and, and, and Canada as pastors. It's a new beginning right now in Jesus' mighty name. Do not underestimate yourself. Doors are getting open right now. Divine doors are getting open right now, right here. In Jesus' name, you are released, sister. You are released. Receive it. Receive it. You are released. Beautiful lady, you are released. At the right place, release, receive it, receive it. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water, lady. Receive it. Brother, receive it. At the right place. You are not going anywhere. God brought you here. This is the ministry you are supposed to serve. Your greatness is right here, brother. Your greatness is right here. Your life will be turned around in Jesus' name. Receive, brother. Receive right now. Great Lady Judy and Brother Raw. Hallelujah. It is your season. It's your season. The season of refreshing is coming in Jesus' name. Refreshing is coming in Jesus' name. Receive, brother. Receive is coming in Jesus' name. Season of refreshing. Hallelujah. Call to the nations of the world. People will see you and get blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hey, you are leading Lodiba, sister. You are more than what you carry right now. More than that. Receive. Receive. Receive, lady, receive. Receive. You are anointed. Receive, lady, receive. Sir, you are blessed. You are blessed. Receive. 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 Receive, receive. receive tonight. Receive, sister. Receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Receive, lady, receive right now. Receive, mother. You are leading Lodiba. You are leading. There's more in store for you. More in store. More in store. Hallelujah. Carla, what a great heart. Beautiful heart. Very humble lady. Very gifted, intelligent, but so humble. You, you let things go. You, you don't force for anything in life. You are so easy. You take things easy. And God says he's seen your beautiful heart. Hallelujah, another level. I see another level. God is going to elevate you. Another level is coming on you in Jesus' name. You and your family receive. Bring her, bring her forward. Bring her forward. You need more, lady. The Lord is turning your life. It's your season now. You will know. You see, there are times even when God opens doors, you don't want to work in. You are so simple and easy. But the Lord is telling me tonight that you will not have any choice like it happened. He's going to cause things to work for you when even you don't want to step forward. Get ready. Get ready. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bring this lady. Bring her. Bring her. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Husband and wife, God is going to take you to another level in Jesus' name. Receive, lady. Receive. Receive right now. Receive. Receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands. Sir. I want to anoint your hands. You are blessed. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I pray for you, Leonard man. That is the way you call yourself. You don't call yourself, but when you go to call, that is the way. My friend, the Leonard, my Leonard colleague. God is going to do amazing things. What a humble man. Sweet man. God is speaking to me right now that he is going to restore your health. I don't know anything, but God is telling me he's going to restore your strength. There's a freshness coming on your life. 
because God is in need of your life. You will use it for his glory in Jesus' name. God will use you for his glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Barbara. Thank you for Barbara. Haley, what a great lady. As we were here with your son, I saw the light of God. Very sweet lady. Good heart. Clean heart. Hallelujah. As the Lord asked me to speak to you, that is a season. What you're going through is a season. Hang in there. Don't let all the negative things you see. Like a young man went to live in Lodiba because he thought there was no future for him. God has a plan for your life. You know what? This is the word God is speaking to me now. The Jewish people thought they were going back. And that is why Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, You stay here. They said that they were living within seven weeks. And he said, no, 70 times seven years that you're going to stay here. God has a plan for your life. What you're going through, you might feel delayed, but you are not denied. Of God promises for your life. It's coming in Jesus' name. Amen. It's coming in Jesus' name, young lady. Receive. Hallelujah. He will use you in a way, preparing you in every way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hand, brother. Great man. A general in the spirit. Hallelujah. Receive, brother. Receive. 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 Receive right now. Receive. Receive. Receive right now. Receive, brother. Receive. Thank you, Lord. You came all the way again tonight. Drove all the way. You love this church. God bless you, brother. And your great wife. Amazing people. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands. I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray for you, brother. Hallelujah. Receive tonight. Receive. Receive. Receive right now. Receive, sister. Hallelujah. Receive, sister. Bring that lady. Bring, bring the lady back. Bring the lady back. He needs more. Bring the lady back. Lady restoration. You've gone through so many things. There's a newness of life coming. There's a newness. There are so many things you've gone through. A painful past. But the Lord is going to give you a glorious future. In Jesus' name. You remember your past and instead of crying, you, 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 you will rejoice for what the Lord is going to do in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Receive, lady. Receive. Receive right now. Receive. Receive. Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Receive, mother. Oh, that is the Lord, lady. Take it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless. I still remember, I think you are the same person the Lord gave you a word in the morning here. That there's increase coming your way. Increase. Expansion. Restoration. Stay faithful to him. It's not about you. It's not about you. He says the more you give to him, the more he's going to bless you. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all your desires, your dreams are coming in Jesus' name. Receive, brother. Receive, brother. Receive. Hallelujah. Jennifer, when you minister tonight, a house were burning. What a voice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your dreams will come, Jennifer. Thank you. Your dreams. Your dreams. You. It's coming to pass in Jesus' name. Your dreams. Don't worry. Provision is already made. It's not about you. I was sharing here, how can I go on a foreign land? Just there, fresh from university, went there, and God is providing, is ministering to 40 million people. Every week, traveling all over. God is releasing what you need for it to be done. Receive. Receive. There's a supernatural release in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Receive. Receive right now. Receive, lady. Thank you, Lord. Receive right now. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is asking me to tell you, lady, do not panic. You are not left behind. Your friend might have gone, and at times you feel that I'm left behind. I don't know much about you, but that's what the Lord is telling me. Don't compare yourself. You are special. You are an Esther. He sees you. You are the apple of his eye. You are not like anybody else. You are special. 
you especially. Leave your friends and let them go and concentrate on him. He holds your future, lady. He holds your future. Thank you, Lord. Receive, lady, right now. Receive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Josh. What an amazing man. Great man. Great man. Thank you, Father, for this man. Your greatness is destined for you. Greatness. In the morning, the Lord told me to tell you about leadership. Greatness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this great man. This is home. There's a new season. As it's going on with you and your wife, the Lord says he's preparing you. And there's a release that's coming. Don't rush. He said, don't rush. Wait on him. In Jesus' name. Wait on him. Hallelujah. Let go, lady. Let them go. Let them go. You're going to see the same friends who, who will say things and they think you're not going anywhere will see you and they will want to be who you are. You've got divine plans for your life, lady. Receive that. In Jesus' name. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands, lady. Beautiful lady. Lift your hands and receive right now. Lift your hands and receive. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Receive, lady. Receive right now. Hear in the Lord. The Lord is speaking to me concerning your life. Receive right now. Receive. Receive. See, he's bringing you out, lady. He's bringing you out. Bringing you out. There are things which are holding you. You should have gone forward more than where you are right now. And the Lord says, anything that is blocking, stopping you from advancing, from going forward, this is your time. Every barrier is broken in Jesus' name. Every barrier is broken in Jesus' name. Lady, go forward in Jesus' name. Open doors. Hallelujah. Open doors. Receive, lady. Receive, receive, receive right now. Receive right now, receive. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Receive. That is the Lord, lady. That is the Lord. That is the Lord. That is the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, young man. Oh, Becky and the Philip. Great people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. This, you are servants. And you see. Your greatness, like Philippians chapter 2, your greatness is in as you serve. You, you, you take delight. I don't know much about you. But you take delight in serving. And God says your greatness is in that. Those, as you serve and you lift the hands of your pastors, supernaturally the Lord is going to bless you and open doors for you in Jesus' name. Receive, Philip. Beg you, receive right now. Receive right now. Do it with joy. The Lord is asking me to tell you, do it with joy. Whatever you do. Hallelujah. Your promotion is already released in the spirit realm. It's coming in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and worship him wherever you are. Lift your hands and worship him tonight. The season of Lodibar is over. Receive it. Whenever you get up, begin to speak. That is what I say. I am a great man special man. I'm an anointed man. I am blessed. Those are the things I speak. Like I'm saying, you may not know, you might think I'm proud. I don't think I'm a kingdom citizen. Begin to, to refuse to accept where the devil have put you. You are special. Come on, lift your hands wherever you are. Lift your hands as I pray for brother Beaver. Lift your hands right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're an amazing brother. You are an amazing brother. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Mm. Brother, I see your times you are so simple. <laughs> but you are so simple. Take things so easy. But the Lord says that he's make you a general in the spirit realm. You, you are mighty force to reckon with. People don't know what you do behind doors, your heart, your passion for the things of God, brother. Hallelujah. Your promotion is coming in Jesus' name. Your promotion is coming. It's your season for promotion, brother. Receive in Jesus' name. Promotion is coming, Lord. Promotion is coming, brother. Receive that in Jesus' name. 
It's coming in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Come on, brother. Come on. Come on with your wife. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Receive, sister. Receive right now. Receive right now, brother. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you are settled. Your hearts are at peace. You're not very young here, and it's true. I don't know you. When I came here last year, I didn't meet you. I think the Lord supernaturally brought you here. And this is home for you. And I tell you that you're going to see a turnaround. When you be at the right place, it doesn't take long for things to change. And you're going to see that. There's going to be a confirmation for you to know that you are the right place. Because of events that are going to take place in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Receive, brother. Receive. Receive. Church, I want you to stretch your hand towards our leaders here. They are the visionaries of the house. I want to pray for Pastor James and Canada. I'm going to pray for them and the church will go as far. These are visionaries. They bring a change wherever they go. There's a supernatural anointing on Pastor James and Pastor Canada. And I want you to believe whatever you are, so stretch forth your hands. They are going to lead you to greatness, these people here. God has supernaturally placed them here. And I want you to give them all the support that you can. Give them all the encouragement that you can. Make the work easier because through these people, my church don't play with me. God, they know God sent me to tend their lives. And I tell you, the same thing is happening here. I see this place as a beacon of light shining around the area. You're going to see, I see supernatural numerical increase in this church. Hallelujah. There's a release already, Pastor James, because of the anointing you and Pastor Canada carry. A release already in Jesus' name. Receive, brother. Receive. Receive. Receive, Canada. Receive right now. Receive. Receive, Canada, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 84 nations is nothing compared to what God is going to do. You, you, you see, when you are obedient to the law, can you pick Pastor James out for me? Because God is speaking about your love. Pick him up. Don't, don't let him rest. It's not time for resting, Pastor James. You cannot rest in the presence of the Lord. He, he's having a rest. You can't rest. You, you, you know what? Because of your obedience, I, I tell you that. God is going to cause the fame that came on Jesus. Your name, just like some of these key people, it won't take long. You're going to see you will become a name person, you people. Don't let it get on you. You carry something. That people will be delighted to be part of you. Hallelujah. It's changing. Within, within the few next few years, you're going to see you become a brand name in the gospel. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Receive that. Receive that. Receive that tonight. Receive that tonight. Come on, lift your hands and worship it. When Pastor James is rested enough, you will wake up. Lift your hands and worship him. Hallelujah. Hey, Oasis. I say Oasis is going to become a brand church, a name church. Lift your hands and thank God for Oasis. Come on, lift your hands and thank God. Oh, no, bo, 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 bo. Your home, this house is going places. I say this house is going places. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The season of Lodiba is over. There's a new anointing coming on Oasis tonight. Come on, let's lift our hands and receive it. Say, let's lift our hands and receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. We worship you. Say, let's enjoy the presence of the Lord. We are living just now. When Pastor James has had enough rest, he wakes up, our hand over to him. We, we are living, but, but just let's enjoy ourselves. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. James and Canada, the Lord, I didn't speak from the flesh. The Lord told me that, that you were going to become a brand P. 
people, your name, people who just like this top Benny Hinton, it, it took a short time for TDJs to become TDJs. Just, just a turn around. And God is preparing you for that. It's coming in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The nations will be asking for you. James and Canada is coming. People will come here and get healed. People will come here and get revived. People will send it here and their lives are going to change. I'm speaking that. I spoke that over a fountain of love and it's happening right now. People are coming from far and near. God has got a spe special anointing over Oasis Church. Come on, lift your hands and thank him. As I hand over to the pastors of this church, lift your hands and thank him. Hallelujah. Help him wake up. I want to hug him. I want to hug him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Love you, sister. Great people. We are in this together. May the Lord bless you. I'm done. Give the Lord a clap offering tonight. There's nothing left to be said other than to stand on your feet and praise Him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Lord! We worship you! Jesus, we give you all the glory. Lord, we thank you for setting us at your table. We thank you for hiding our shame. We thank you for making us your kids and showing us favor for Jesus' sake. We receive the favor. We receive the blessing. We receive the healing. We receive the divine empowerment. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I just saw. Now listen, I just saw as a prophetic act that you're coming from Lodabar to the King's Palace. Let's run around this church. Let's run around. Come on. Let's run around this church. Hallelujah. presence of the Lord out of this place and release it on somebody that needs a miracle and needs a healing and tell them about the goodness of God. Amen. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for sealing it by the Holy Spirit. Not one thing will be lost in Jesus' name. Not one word that was spoken will be lost from this weekend. But Lord, we thank you. It's branded on our spirit. Our identity is the sons of God seated at the king's table eating there continually and Lord that you have sent your angels as servants to work for us to bring the harvest and the blessing in Lord we give you praise hallelujah thank you for blessing us and making us a blessing kings in your kingdom Jesus we worship you and we thank you for all of it Father we worship you and we thank you hallelujah 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 Glory, 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 glory. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Wayne, just take us out in song. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You are dismissed. To have a reason to 
take some time and praise the Lord. Any time is a good season. So come on, let's just praise the Lord. Yeah. We don't need to have a reason to take some time and praise the Lord. Any time is a good season. So come on, let's just praise the Lord.